Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Um, I'm Sharon Fadil. I'll be talking to you on caudal anesthesia for adult daycare surgery. Welcome and a very good morning for those of you in Europe. I'm recording this from the Langkawi Island of Malaysia. Uh, behind me is the actual rainforest. Uh, it is not a backdrop. Uh, with regards to disclosure, there's nothing for me to disclose for this talk in particular. Uh, this talk is based on mainly on the case series that we uh, published in Malaysian Journal of Anesthesiology sometime late last year, titled Ultrasound Guided Caudal Epidural Anesthesia for MRI Targeted Transperineal Prostate Biopsy. Uh, to the best of our knowledge, during the writing of the article, uh, no one has documented the use of ultrasound guided caudal epidural anesthesia for transperineal prostate biopsy. There have been other documentations on prostate biopsy, but not transperineal. Uh, we are working uh, in this hospital down south of Peninsula Malaysia or West Malaysia. Uh, it is um, a 140 bedded tertiary multi-specialty hospital. Uh, and we have a one surgeon urology service. Uh, when this came to the hospital, the robotic uh, prostate biopsy navigation system. Uh, there been there is there was some pressure for us to actually uh, provide anesthesia as a day as daycare service. Um, the robot enables uh, the MRI images of the prostate to be fused with the real time ultrasound, transrectal ultrasound images, and the robot can be directed to perform multiple punctures. Uh, transperineal punctures for biopsy of the prosthetic lesions. Um, with regards to definition, I know there have been various definitions for um, the care surgery, particularly the 23-hour one where the patients do stay overnight, but they are discharged the next day, uh, less than 24 hours stay. But uh, what our surgeon insisted, our urologist insisted that the patients be discharged three to four hours uh, after the actual procedure itself. Um, so we explored, we initially tried general anesthesia, probably um, uh, not favorable uh, in terms of recovery uh, with you know, the, the, the tight timeline of about four hours uh, of discharge. And um, we did uh, try uh, the first few cases with spinal, but we found that they may recover uh, in terms of their muscular function, but they do have, the patients do have uh, urinary retention. And this is a a significant concern of our surgeon. So uh, we explored the idea of um, caudal epidural anesthesia. So uh, if you look at the more recent uh, anatomic uh, data coming from particularly these uh, three, these two studies that I quoted down below, that there's actually um, the sacral canal is about 30, sacral volume of sacral canal is about 38 mils and the caudal volume is about 14 and a half mils. Uh, and we know that the, we, there is a sacral coccygeal membrane which uh, covers the uh, actual uh, sacral hiatus itself and it's uh, the bordered laterally, both laterally by the sacral cornu. So this is uh, an excess of the epi caudal epidural space. Uh, Dermatomal-wise, uh, uh, the Sacral nerves covers a uh, uh, part of the genitals, and what where we are concerned is where the needle is being put through for transperineal biopsies is around the S for uh, dermatome. This is where there will be multiple punctures. There will be a rectal ultrasound probe uh, put through the rectum to the anus, sorry, and uh, the multiple punctures on the S for dermatome. Uh, so the idea is actually trying to put the needle uh, through um, the sacral coccygeal membrane and depositing local anesthetic in the caudal epidural space. Uh, when we're looking at data, this was uh, a review article published on the anatomy. Uh, and this is what we can see in the transverse view, the sacral cornu, sacral coccygeal limb, the sacral hiatus, as well as the basal sacrum. And in the trans, in the, sorry, in the longitudinal view, uh, with the needle uh, 
in plane. Uh, the needle penetrates the sacral membrane, the sacral hiatus, and the base of, uh, base of sacrum. And this, uh, again, uh, the ultrasound probe is put in the trans, uh, in the, sorry, in the longitudinal uh, plane. So uh, we explored certain techniques and we, this, uh, most of us now will do this uh, caudal epidural in uh, the prone position. It is most comfortable for the patient. We do give a bit of uh, sed light sedation and particularly uh, more so for us, uh, it is probably the, in terms of economics, it's most probably the most uh, economic for uh, the operator. Um, and we use uh, our dominant hand, particularly for the right-handers to handle the needle. Uh, the, these are uh, the equipment that we use. We found the use of um, needle, uh, needle guides particularly useful for those who are probably uh, new to the technique because this enables to for the for the appearance of the in-plane needle on the ultrasound beam without much uh, adjustment of the probe and needle as well. So again, this is uh, cordet on the left and cephalet on the right, and the needle goes through and the patient is in a prone position. Uh, these are some of the images from the journal, uh, from the article that we publish. Again, similar uh, uh, images, and this is in a transverse view. Sacral coccygeal membrane, sacral hiatus, uh, base of sacrum, and the cornu bilaterally. Uh, and in, this is the uh, view of the image in the longitudinal view. And we have a video recording just to highlight the, what we see on injection. Can you see? And also uh, what we describe as a pump effect, meaning that during injection, the caudal epidural seems to expand, and when the uh, injection stops, it collapses. So this gives us an idea on the uh, correct pl placement of the local anesthetic and gives us confidence uh, that the block will work. Uh, when we started this, we explored various local anesthetic. We were using ropivacaine, uh, various um, concentrations, and finally we settled on 1.5% uh, lignocaine and this uh, 20 mils. And this seems to work well with regards to anesthesia, but a uh, return of uh, motor, or I would say return, uh, preserve, preservation of motor function, uh, lower limb motor function, but the return of bladder function uh, early. Uh, there was another article with, uh, this was for gynae, uh, minor gynae procedures as outpatient as well. The, the otters uh, used 20 mils of 1.5 cell lignocaine and uh, they had the documented a duration of about 46 minutes. So this is probably true for our patients as well. Uh, the patients, uh, the, so the procedures should be done within a, a, an hour uh, of the placement of the caudal epidural. Uh, another issue that the surgeon was concerned about was uh, bladder dysfunction uh, or urinary retention. So when we're looking at data, this was a systematic review on neural axial anesthesia and bladder dysfunction. We can see that when uh, for uh, spinal, uh, when bupivacaine, levofin, ropivacaine uh, is used, there is actually delayed or uh, time to make duration, right? Anything from 160 right up to 462 minutes. And uh, this is also true for uh, epidural uh, with bupivacaine, longer acting ones, the significant uh, you know, uh, percentage of those with uh, incidence of retention but probably not so uh, when lignocaine is used. And you can see that incidence is quite low. Um, another point that we like to point uh, uh, share is that sometimes there is significant ossification or calcification of sacrococcygeal membrane when everything is in plane, in line, the needle may not be able to puncture. And this is sometimes we need to explore uh, sort of uh, uh, areas where there will be less calcification or ossification for the needle to, to pierce through. Uh, I like to summarize, these are with the benefits that we found um, with uh, caudal epidural anesthesia with 1.5% lignocaine, there is relaxation of anal sphincter and the surgeons can easily pass the probe. Uh, the uh, anal pro uh, rectal probe, uh, this minimal motor blockade, patients can move from the bed uh, through, through the trolley or, or, other, way, or other way around. There's definitely no hypotension that we've seen. Reduction of post-procedure urinary retention. These patients tend uh, to be seen about two to three hours in the clinic, and they are able to actually void 
and uh, the at the end of the day they can be discharged within about uh, four to six hours after the procedure. With that, I thank you.